This week I found myself needing to add a feature to one of my applications that would take HTML documents and convert them to PDF documents. My intention was just to grab an existing library and implement that library in my application. I decided to make this video because I thought I'd save you the drudgery of testing each of these libraries to see if it met the requirements that I needed for my application. My requirements were pretty straightforward. Number one, I wanted it to be free. Number two, I wanted it to be able to produce attractive and clean PDFs. And number three, I wanted it easy to implement and pretty lightweight without a myriad of dependencies that the library would require. Now I'm well aware that there's some complications with converting HTML to PDF. This is because HTML and PDF serve completely different purposes. HTML focuses on displaying web pages and rendering them on a screen, whereas PDFs are designed for printable documents. So because of this, I still wasn't expecting any built-in functionality in the modern .NET 8 environment. So it was around this time I remember Nick Chapsis recently made a video about Quest PDF which was a project dedicated to generating PDF documents from C Sharp. So while Quest PDF is great and free it was quickly clear that they didn't support HTML to PDF. Luckily though someone started a project to extend Quest PDF that includes printing from HTML to PDF. I was quickly left disappointed because it wasn't long after rendering a few PDFs I realized that that library couldn't handle even the simplest of CSS properties so we had to scrap that one. I then spent the next couple of days trying a stack of different libraries. IQ PDF, just the website itself. Look how old this looks. VB.net Seriously, have no faith in that. WK HTML to PDF, just everyone on the internet seems to moan about it, so that one's out. Iron PDF, too expensive. PDF Sharp, Benchkin. So until I stumbled on Select PDF, which seemed to be modern, really good, .NET Core version, the license says it's completely free with a community edition, and I quote, community edition is provided as a free product that can be used for personal and commercial purposes without any limitation. Sounded a bit too good to be true. Looking a bit further, we find features not that are not part of the community edition. The important ones are create PDF document with more than five pages. All I needed was three pages at a time. I couldn't see a situation where each PDF would be more than five pages. Sounded really good. I was, was going to give it a decent try. Looking at the code here, looks really simple and easy to implement. One of the big caveats is select PDF only works on Windows systems, no support for Linux, Xamarin or other platforms. My particular application I was developing for was a WPF application so this didn't happen to be a limitation for me. So absolutely great so far. So after installing the NuGet package, the .NET Core version which is supported .NET 5 to 8. So we're at a simple application in WPF which gets an HTML string, creates an instance of the converter, calls the convert to HTML string, passing in the HTML, and saves the PDF. There's a couple of overloads here, but in my case, I just wanted it to generate a PDF to file system. So my HTML string just included some basic HTML elements, some CSS attributes, and an image, really. Um, I figured if it could handle that, it should be able to handle the rest. So this looks pretty good. We've got uh, some formatting options here. Our table is formatted pretty well. Our image is displaying just fine. So matching all the requirements so far that almost every one of the others has failed on. The only thing I still need to do is to test the limitations of this particular community edition. So now I wanted to generate enough HTML content that would generate a PDF longer than five pages long. So this produced six pages, but on the sixth page, it cut off the content, it could only uh, safely produce five pages. Based off what this document is doing to the image over here, it immediately got me thinking, how well does this handle page breaks? So I amended my code to insert a page break here and with some CSS in the header section. I was expecting this to put decent page breaks, but unfortunately it yielded the same result. So there's a little bit of a full flaw there, the fact that it doesn't seem to support page breaks, at least not in that way, but I'm gonna be using this going forward. Leave a like if this helped you out at all and consider subscribing if you wanna see more .NET content like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.